Hello everyone, this is Professor Capco again. Uh, today we're going to learn how to convert from one unit to another. Many problems, uh, many math problems, both in school and in real life, require that you convert one set of units to another set of units. I'm going to show you how to easily do that so you won't have any problems with this in the future. Um, if you know these steps, it'll work for any type of conversion. Uh, the things you need to know, though, however, all you need to know is what you're trying to convert, what your units are, and you need to know your conversion factors. A conversion factor is just what you are using, what's the relationship between the units. Now, sometimes for some problems, in fact, our example is going to be one like that, you need more than one set of conversion factors because you have to do conversions a step at a time. All right, you could skip some steps if you know the conversion factor to skip from a larger unit to a smaller unit or vice versa, but I'm going to show you the steps so that you'll be able to do this every time, and if you can shorten it up, that's perfect. All right, so our first problem here says how many inches are in 10 yards? How many inches are in 10 yards? So we know we're looking for an answer in inches. We not want to know how many inches are in 10 yards. We know the number of yards. So I tell students, always go from what you know to what you don't know. What you don't know. All right, so some of our conversion factors. There are 11 inches in one foot, and there are three feet in a yard. So we're going to start with what we know. We know that we have 10 yards. So I'm going to write that down, 10 yards. And just to keep everything easier to work with, I'm going to put that over 1. Because anything over 1 is itself. Okay, It's not required you do that, but I think you'll see that it will help keep everything lined up a little, more, a little bit better. Okay, so I've got 10 yards over 1. And I want to multiply. I'm always multiplying by my conversion factors. Okay, so my next conversion factor, I need to convert yards into something. Okay, so I look at my conversion factors and I've got feet and yards over here. This one up here with inches and feet does not have yards in it. So I'm going to focus on this one here. One yard is equal to three feet, or you can go in reverse. Three feet equal one yard. It doesn't matter because equal sign tells you they're the same value. They don't look the same, but they are the same value. Just like $5 bill in one hand and five singles in the other hand are the same value. They don't look the same, but they're the same. So three feet is the same thing as one yard. So I want to convert yards to feet is the next step. So we're going to multiply by another fraction. We start out, I've created a fraction here. I'm going to multiply by another fraction. The question is, what goes on top and what goes on the bottom? Because these are equivalent. In other words, three feet over one yard is the same thing as one yard over three feet because they both equal one. They're the same value. So the question is, what goes on top and what goes on the bottom? Well, I want yards to go away because I'm trying to convert away from yards. Yards is what I started with. I want to convert away from yards. So I'm going to put yards on the bottom. And you'll see why in a moment. And if yards are on the bottom, feet have to go on top because my conversion factor is three feet equals one yard. So if I've got yards on the bottom and feet on the top, then I've got this set up the way I want it to. Now I look here, I've got one yard. So I've got one yard, I don't really need the S there, is equal to three feet. Now my conversion factor is now converted into a fraction. Three feet is one yard, three feet is one yard. One, it's one over one, so it's one. Okay, so I've got three feet is equal to one yard. But I'm still not satisfied yet because I'm, I'm converting to feet. I need inches is what I'm looking for. So I look at the next conversion factor, and I've got 12 inches is equal to 1 foot. So I'm going to multiply by that conversion factor as well. So I put my parentheses there to show I'm multiplying. I put my fraction. Again, the question becomes what goes on top and what goes on the bottom. Well, I want to wind up with inches because that's what the question's asking. And I want feet to go away. So if I get feet on top here, I want feet on the bottom here. And you'll see what I mean in a moment. And since feet are on the bottom, inches go on top. Because our conversion factor has got inches and feet. Well, our conversion factor says one foot is equal to 12 inches. So my 12 goes on top there. Okay, now I've set up everything 
the way I want it. Now, all I need to do is cross things out. Well, yards and yards cancel each other out, and feet and feet cancel each other out. That's why I wanted one on top, one on the bottom. I'm left with the only units left is inches. So all I need to do now is multiply across. 10 times 3 is 30, and then I multiply by 12 is 360. 360. When you multiply, you multiply straight across, right? And you don't need a common denominator. At the bottom, I got 1 times 1 times 1. So I could write this as 360 over 1. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save time and not do that. What is my units? Well, the only units that survived, yards went away, feet went away, the only units that survived is inches. So I know that the final answer is 360 inches. So 10 yards is equal to 360 inches. So that's the first one. Let's do another. Let's do a weight conversion. Let's say I've got someone who weighs 250 pounds. What is their weight in kilograms? Okay, so you might need to convert pounds to kilograms. Well, I need to know my conversion factor, and you can look that up, and one kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds. That's one people use all the time, particularly in the medical field, so you may almost have that memorized. Okay, so as I told you, now I've got my conversion factor. I always start with what I know, and I go to what I don't know. And we're looking for the weight in kilograms. That's what we're trying to solve for. So I circle that just so I know what I'm aiming for. So my answer needs to be in kilograms. So I start out with what I know. I know that the patient or whoever we're talking about weighs 250 pounds. And just like before, I'm going to put it over 1. Again, it's not required. Anything over 1 is itself. I do that just to keep everything lined up better. Now I'm going to take my pounds, my 250 pounds, and I'm going to multiply it by my conversion factor. My conversion factor, I've got 1 kilogram equals 2.2 pounds, so I'm going to need to do that as a fraction. These are ratios, so I'm, ratios and fractions are pretty much the same thing, and I just need to figure out what goes on top, what goes on the bottom. So what do you think is going to go on the bottom here? Remember that I want to have an answer in kilograms and I want pounds to go away. So what should go on the bottom? Exactly right. Pounds needs to go on the bottom. And kilograms should go on top. I'm going to put kg for kilograms. So it's the abbreviation for that. Okay, so I got pounds on the bottom, kilograms on top. I look at my conversion factor. I've got one kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds. So my 2.2 goes here. So 2.2 pounds and 1 kilogram, they're the same thing. And I'm multiplying that by 250 pounds. Well, I got pounds on the bottom here, pounds on the top here. So those cancel out. I've got kilograms left over. So I'm, I've got 250 times 1 is 250. And I've got 1 times 2.2 is 2.2. So I've got 250 divided by 2.2. Well, that answer is 113.6, approximately. And the only question left is, what is the units? Well, pounds went away. The only units left is kilograms, kg, which is what we needed anyway. So 113.6 kilograms. Now, there's decimal going out further, but I just rounded it to the nearest tenth. But you'll have to look at whatever particular problem you're working with to know what you need to round to. Okay, so that's how you do conversions. Hopefully you'll find this as an easy method to use. And uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And don't forget, Professor Capco says, keep your grade alive and subscribe. Subscribe to my channel and you'll get all the latest uh, help with your problems. All right, until next time, it's Professor Capco. Thank you.